Oh, come on. Please. Ida, get that, will you? Don't I always? Ah. At last. Take this. No, I won't. It's Lucille Hardy. It's about Babe. Can you take a message, please, Ida? I... I said, take a message. Lucille, uh, Stan is a little tied up right now. Can he? Can he call you back? Congratulations, Mr. Thank Hardy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, boys, stop back. <laughs> You're vaudeville, gotta be. Only stage training can make you that sharp. No, sir. Movies all the way. I mostly work with Larry Seaman. You had seen you somewhere before. <laughs> Seaman, better watch out. You're good, Mr. Hardy. So are you, Mr. Law. Well, I hope we work together again sometime. Anytime you can spare ten dollars a day. My friends call me Babe. Babe. <laughs> I'll tell him. This has gone too far, Stan. I can't believe you just did that. Whatever will Lucille think? Please, Eda, not again. You know I can't talk to anybody. Oh, so I'm supposed to tell her that you're too busy watching your old movies? I won't let you do this, Stan. Do what? Bury yourself away in this room while I keep the world at bay. I am under doctor's orders to rest. You're not resting. You're hiding. Lucille called because... Because I haven't been to see Babe for months, I know. Doesn't she know that I haven't seen anybody? Lucille called because Babe won't be here tomorrow. Lucille says that he sleeps most of the time, so don't expect too much, Stan. Stan?
Ali. Ali. Ali is me, Stanley. Hey, Ali, I know you're mad at me for not coming to see you, but I was sitting at home with Ida, and I was getting kind of bored of the television, and I said, I guess I'll go and see Ali. And you know what she said? <laughs> She said, well, go see him by all means, but tell him I won't have him in the house ever again, not after what happened the last time. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, the next time he wants you to go with him to that silly convention in Chicago, you tell him to go by himself. <laughs> Babe? Babe? Are you asleep? Hmm? No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. No, please, please, babe. No, it's only me. Please, babe. Please. I'm, shh, shh, no, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Please, babe. It's me, Stanley. Remember? What's happened? It's okay, Lucille. I'm, I, I'm dealing with what it. What have you done? Oh, look at me. Look at my face. You know me. Look at me. You know me! That's right. That's it. <laughs> Yes, babe. Stan's here. I'll get some more water. <laughs> there. Uh, Stanley screwed up again. Hmm? I mean, I thought if you heard me through the door. You know. Hey, Ollie, why won't you let me in? <laughs> I thought you'd know me. Instead, I made things worse. I mean, you saw someone that you couldn't remember, and you went into an Oliver Hardy flat spin panic. Really big, right? <laughs> Running around the room, <laughs> trying to hide from the landlord. Edgar Kennedy coming to get us, eh, babe? <laughs> Quick, hide the goat! <laughs> Stan. Stan. I'll be back in a moment. You could have killed him. He's, he's tougher than that. Don't give me that, Stan. You haven't had to live with him like this. No wonder he wouldn't recognize you. You barely visited the last 11 months. No, no, I, I know. If you want to help him, just make him take some food and don't wear him out. Right, of course. I mustn't choke, so give him plenty of water. It'll come and go on you with no warning. One minute he's there, the next he's... He doesn't know how bad he is. There's a cancer set in since a stroke. It's just getting weaker. I just want it to be over. Just cheer him up. He mustn't know, that's all. He'd only give up. And nobody's told him? Would you want to know if it was you? When my time comes, you better want to know. Stan. Just do what Lucille asks. There you are, babe. All the water you could possibly want. He likes to hear the news being read to him. Oh, fine. Oh, I'll leave you two alone, then. Right. Hello, Mr. Hardy. Mr. Laurel, come to visit. <laughs> I brought you some hard-boiled eggs and some nuts. <laughs> Remember? I've been watching some of our old stuff. Hard-boiled eggs and nuts. Mm. <laughs> and then you hit me on the head with the bedpan. No, 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 the bedpan is down here. Uh, babe, don't, don't sit up. Do you want to sit? Do you want to sit up? You, do, just relax. Let me help you. Just let me help. <laughs> Why don't you do something to help me? <laughs> However many times have I helped you up, uh, brushed you down, uh, tried to get that ceiling plaster off your face, uh, and the, the paint off your pants. Uh, uh, Found your derby, 
and placed it delicately upon your head. Comfy? Hmm? Comfy as you can be, right? I know, I know. You see, we're not used to making people feel miserable. You and me. Because I was lucky. I got so much back after my stroke. I could talk and remember. And that's the problem, you see. I, I don't know. I don't know how much you can remember. See, what we have now, you and me, it's all memories. Look, how many times am I going to have to say this? You need him, Stan. Wrong, Hal. I don't need anybody, least of all him. Every David needs his Goliath. Even Chaplin had Eric Campbell. I'm giving you two a week to come up with something. Plenty of fears, plenty of good hard knocks. Then we'll just sit back and watch your cash roll in, right? I just want to direct and star in my own film. You're not going it alone, not at this studio. Fine. Then pay me off. Uh-uh. I'm not kissing away a cast iron certainty. You and Babe Hardy are box office. I can feel it in my bones. Fat heavy and thin goofball, pure gold dust. It'll be another mismatch like Jimmy Finlayson and Theda Barra. Forget it, Hal. Who the hell do you think you are? If you were bringing in Chaplin or Keaton's money, you can say that whenever you like. But you're not. Take a look at your contract. You play as cast. So go out there and get beaten up in a funny way. It's what you do best. Sorry I'm late, Mr. Roach. I was on my way home when you called. What is it you wanted to see me about? Hello, Mr. Long. Let's try this. No. No. Oh, I'll fall through. You'll be pushing me. Okay, but I'll fall through like this. Mm -hmm. Would um no, you miss me. If you if you so, just... No, you have to give me time to get up before you come through after me, right? Sorry. Sorry. It's way too long for me to wait if you want me right behind you on the stairs. Will you just try it? Can we at least get to the gag? It doesn't work. What do you mean, it doesn't work? It doesn't make sense. It'll work fine once we can time it, right? Jesus. Tell you what we'll do. Save your breath. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll stop playing games with each other. You haven't given me an inch since we started. It's early days. I think it's more than that. You don't want to be teamed, and a story. It's not like I have a choice. Well, I do. I'm going to go play golf until you're ready to work. Oh, I'm working, babe. It's you we've got the problem with. Really? Yeah. Roach gives me a heavy and thinks the laughs will just come, but it's the same laugh time and time again if all heavy can do is be heavy. That is only so funny. I've given it my best shot. I really have. Right. Well... Thanks for letting me know. I ought to tell you, Stan, so far today, you didn't make me laugh once. You said what? I said I didn't need him. And? I said fat was only so funny, which it is. And he walked out on you. Yeah. Well, well done, Stan. You sure told him. When are you going to learn? You cannot treat people as way stations and meal tickets. Here we go again. Everything just has to be a battle, doesn't it? Go to sleep. No, damn you! You cannot always go your own way, Stan. 
There is the rest of the world to think of. Hey, look, I'll be fine. I wasn't thinking of you. Is he there today? Not so far. And maybe he's a she. What are we going to call him? What is she going to eat? Oh, that's it. Just hit out when you can have what you want, and your nearest and dearest will just take it. Not me, Lois. I'll take the fall and stroll on. Oh, no, you don't, Stan. That's what you like to think you do. But I know better. Every little cut you get bleeds for the longest time. Some of them won't even heal. I am not going to spend my life stitching them up. Fine. Go find another husband. There's plenty of doormats out there. Boy, this is getting familiar. Stan. Stan. Babe Hardy's a nice guy. He didn't deserve what you did to him at the studio. You were going round to his place, and you were apologizing. Oh, I kill I am. Not because you can't work with him, not for Roach or for me, but because you know just as well as I do that that is the only decent thing that you can do. And if you can't do that, then you're not my Stan. You're not the Stan I love. My God, babe, Lois was good to me. She could see through me like glass. Yeah, she was the best. She gave me my little girl. And I gave her... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can't control the memories, hmm? <laughs> Thank God I have some good ones. You walked right in, but that might even notice him, right under the wire. How's it going? Fine. What do you want? Nothing. You're going to invite me in? Is that it? Is that what? My apology. If it isn't, I'm damned if I know why you're here. Forget it, babe. Just forget it. Would you like a drink? Sure. Well, are you going to invite me in or what? Uh, it's a lovely evening. Why don't we sit out here on the porch? Play baseball? Baseball never made it to North Shields. <laughs> I, I played shortstop at military college. He's the fellow who's supposed to stop the line drives from going out the field. So it helps if you have breadth. <laughs> <laughs> I hated team games. The thing about a team is they all want the same thing. They're all coming from the same place. They all dress the same. And they don't compete with each other. It's the team against the rest of the world. Of course, within the team, you have personalities. Somebody who maybe thinks he's smarter than the other people. Somebody who thinks he's dumber. Correct. But essentially, they're after the same thing, which they're unlikely to get, because the guy who thinks he's smart is just as dumb as the other guy. 
<laughs> well, nobody likes a smart Alec. But everybody loves a couple of guys they can feel superior to. Yeah, well, I always hated, hated team, team games, games, right? So you wouldn't know the difference between one team and another. Well, there's playing for a team, and there's playing for a team that wins. That is the best feeling in the world, Stan. The chemistry flowing, always someone there to share the load with, and the glory. And you and I've got it, mister. We had it on day one, and we got it now. And you just got to see it, that's all. You see, you dumb son of a bitch. I don't see myself as Babe Hardy. I see myself as Babe Ruth. And you're Lou Gehrig, and together we're the Yankees, with the World Series in the bag. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hmm. Are you saying we're very, very good? I certainly am, Stanley. United we stand, divided we... Fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, onward and upward. Upward and onward. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't believe a word of it until I discovered a couple of things. That you were the greatest at taking a fall. Now, Keaton, Keaton could get a laugh that would last a couple of seconds, but you, you would milk it. Chaplin couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, but you could do it. <laughs> All we had to do was keep the camera rolling, and you'd stare into it, and that's it! That's it! <laughs> you'd be sitting in the fallout from some terrible disaster, and you'd raise your hand slowly to the devastation all around you, and you'd pick the tiniest piece of fluff off your jacket, and you'd flick it away. And then, of course, there was the famous tight riddle, huh? There was no problem that was too big or too, too embarrassing not to be magicked away by one affable tight riddle. And the audience never realized that you were buying us time because your reaction kept them laughing. What did you do that for? <laughs> Fat man losing his dignity, and you made it the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> And you suggested things that I would never suggest. Humiliation, piled upon humiliation. And all the time that people loved you for it, we never knew that you hated it. That fat, that you. Oh, Lucille said I should give you plenty of water. And I am more terrified of Lucille than you could ever know. Oh, yes, and she um, said that you, you like to have uh, to hear the, the, the paper read. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> Russia launches spaceship. Oh, there's a thing called Sputnik. Sputnik? It's a spaceship. And, and the Russians have sent it up and it's going around the world right now, overhead. <laughs> and everybody is as mad as hell. <laughs> Listen, Moscow claims it is the first step towards mankind going into space. <laughs> now, we never thought of that, huh? Laurel and Hardy in space. Stankov and Olyovsky, cleaners to the Russian space program. <laughs> We're cleaning up at the launch pad. And I start to polish a handle, and you say, don't touch that. And I say, why not, Ollie? And you say, because you'll just mess things up. You do the floors, I'll do the important things. And I do a take and carry on cleaning the handle. And you get mad and take a swing at me. And I duck, and, and you hit the handle, which closes the door. And you're panicking, and I'm crying. 
and then you, you say, it's okay. I'll press one of these buttons and get some help. And you press a big red button on a control panel, and of course, it's the blast off button. And with the speed of the takeoff, we're we're. <laughs> and and you look at me and you say, "Well, that's another nice mess you've got me into." <laughs> <laughs> I made you laugh. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, when we worked on the set, I never knew what worked until you saw it and heard it. And then I would see your face light up like the rising sun and you'd shake. <laughs> we'll make that. Laurel and Hardy in space, when you're better, we'll do that. What did I do? Babe. Oh, I, I, I've tired you out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I suppose I'd, I'd better go. Listen, you can't turn your back on me. I don't understand. I just made you laugh. I mean, do you want me to go or stay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're hungry. <laughs> I'll go and get Lucille. Christ, babe, I didn't have to come here, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm... The last few weeks have been rotten. I... No, forget it. <laughs> My mouth. Oh, say something. Say what? You know, don't you? The doctors haven't said anything to you, have they? Lucille. Only one person left you can trust, huh? <laughs> Poor you. Oh, boy. So where do you want me to start? I lied. I didn't call Lucille. She called me and she told me I ought to get over here. And the girls are waiting outside because they thought that we might want to say goodbye. There'll be no Laurel and Hardy in space. I know. I know. And you'll never again say, that's another nice mess you got me into. And uh, Lucille and Nita are in the kitchen because Lucille was crying and she didn't want you to see. And I have been hiding myself away at home because I don't know how to cope when you go. Is that enough truth? See, you knew all along, but you had to know that I knew, right? Look, I don't want you to leave me. But I'm damned if I want to see you in this lousy bed in this stuffy room, getting smaller and smaller, losing all that, that hardy bulk. Thanks, babe. Looks like I did something right, huh? You know, Lucille is going to kill me. So now you've got the truth. But I don't know where that leaves us. I didn't want to come here. I don't want to be here now. I just feel like curling up in a ball and hiding. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody for months, you know. Too scared. Well, you know why. Because my time will be next. It's just that I, I hadn't considered a world where you wouldn't be around. Oh, shit. This wasn't supposed to happen. Where's little Lois? Downstairs with the nurse. What are we gonna tell her? That she's not getting the little brother she wanted. Pretty straightforward. Stan, don't 
Don't do this. Do what? I'm not doing anything. I'm real sorry, Lois, but when my little son dies after only nine days, this is how I handle it. And if you can't handle that, it's not my problem. Well, what about me? What, what about little Lois? We are your family. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Babe? Babe? I was reading the newspaper, wasn't I? Now, the horses, huh? You li like the horses, don't you? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Here we are, Santa Anita race course. <clears throat> 3 30. Number one, blue chip, six to four. Number two, ace in the hole, 10 to 1. And third is chapel goer, 15 to 1. Know any of those horses, huh? Babe? Hmm? Know any of those nags? Uh-uh, here we are. Also ran uh, Cherry Blossom, Altamont, and Doughboy. You know Doughboy, don't you? Huh? <laughs> Doughboy? No. Damn it, babe, don't you dare leave me. You told him. He wanted to know. Oh, Stan, for God's sake. Don't tell Lucille. He just went. What did you expect him to do? How else can he deal with it? Why did you make me come here? What? Since when have I been able to make you do anything you didn't want to do? I didn't want us to see each other like this. Why didn't you just leave us with our memories? Oh, right, and let you ignore your best friend on his deathbed? It'll be my turn next. You have to deal with all this. Take a good look at it and see what it did to Lucille. Stan, just for once, try and think of this from someone else's point of view. Oh, whose? His or yours? How's it going? Oh, it's fine, I think. He, he, he just... I'm, I'm sorry, Lucille. He... He just... Oh. My husband comes and goes in his own good time. I can't expect the politeness of a lifetime to figure much here. But you know, babe, sensitive beyond the capabilities of most people. I talk to him a lot when he's like this. Don't expect me to be so devoted when your time comes. You knew the score when you married me. Oh, yeah. The audience has got the best of you, too. Why have we got what was left? You know something? You have no idea how lucky you are to get this time with Babe. Babe? Babe, now you listen to me. There are things here that need dealing with. A joint contract. Does Babe know about this? He's with me all the way, you know? It's not that long ago. I had to beg you to work with a guy. Now you're his agent. What's happened, Stan? Realize you can't do without him? You can't do without us, Hal. In less than a month, you've got to renew my contract our contract, or let me go. Wrong, pal. Babe's contract's good for another 12 months. Right. What are you gonna do? Split up the most successful comedy team in the movies? Find Babe another partner? Got Harry Langdon under contract. Good partner for Babe. Oh, come on. Don't take me for a fool. Langdon was washed up five years ago. Stanley here's trying to renegotiate your contract. You okay about this, Babe? Stan speaks for us both, Mr. Roach. Who speaks for Henry Ginsburg? Henry Ginsburg's the new head of the studio. He's taken over financial affairs on behalf of the Bank of America. You've handed control over to a bank? There was a little thing called the Wall Street Crash, or didn't you hear? We needed help, we got it.
Every day a new pile of these arrives on my desk from New York. This one was a particular delight. Memo to Roach from Ginsburg. Re SL. That'll be you then. SL is demanding an expensive player piano, no doubt to destroy, and five days location filming on one flight of steps. Show me that. Yeah. And it's not just the overspends. If you need a lever regarding SL and OH, suggest finding out if OH is aware of the great disparity between his income from Hal Roach's studios and SL's. Where is he? Back east. You can see him on Monday. Give me that. Do you want to know how much I earn, babe? Dumb to ask. Stanley got 123,000 last year, babe, to your 85. I wrote, directed, edited, supervised while Babe was on the damn golf course. No offence, no Babe. Taken. And until you give us joint ownership, you'll make millions out of us while we A make... A small fortune, Mr. Moral Superiority. Come on! This ain't about Babe or money. It's about control. Just like all your other beefs. We're an employee, pal. And that's how you'll stay. Unless you care to walk. Become the solo star you always said you were. Like you could. Don't push me, Al. Whoa, that's scary. There won't be a nameplate left in the building. Punch as hard as you like, slugger, because I won't be here. You're quitting the studio? Nah, just a couple of months. I'm flying the plane down to South America, then up to Europe. When Lindbergh goes, Roach can follow. And our contract negotiations? This office door will always be open to the most successful comedy team in the movies. Mr. Ginsburg was very specific. Sorry about that, babe. Stanley's getting more difficult every year. He'd rather knock down a wall than walk through a door. I don't ask for much, Mr. Roach. Just straight talking, plain dealing. I can't believe he pulled that crack about you being on the golf course. But what you did just now shows a disdain for professional courtesy I find deeply offensive. I do hope you think it was worth it. Babe. Don't let him take you in. It's his talents that are making the studio great, Mr. Roach, not mine. They're also paying for your plane trip and doubtless your new office. He's poison, babe. He'll turn on you sooner or later. You heard him just now. The big I am. Mr. Ginsburg and I know that you're just as important to this partnership as he is. To quote my friend, Mr. Laurel, please don't take me for a fool. And you can pass that request on to Mr. Ginsburg when you see him. and I are uh, all washed up. But what about your little girl? There's somebody else. And I swear, if you lecture me, I'll never make another movie with you as long as I live. They're myrtles. There'll be others hidden around the house. I usually find them. Of course, you and Myrtle don't have a child at all. Luck of the draw, I guess. I dig in and battle away for every little thing, and you just journey serenely on. God, I wish I knew how you did it. How dumb can you be? Ollie is who I'd love to be. A grown-up kid with no responsibilities, who takes the world in his stride, even if he falls flat on his face. Perfect for a fat, shy kid from Georgia. Yeah, but hell, babe, 
Laurel and Hardy don't mean anything to anybody. Just a couple of clowns. I saw a breadline today. Must have been a hundred people. We've sure got it easy compared to them. We've not got it easy. No one's got it easy. We just got it different, that's Fighting. all. Fighting. Real vicious. What does Stan and Ollie mean to them? You with a crab in your pants isn't going to help them one bit. Tell me that again. I said... Tell me that again. We drop our trousers and fall over, and they're fighting over bread. And, well, we don't mean anything to... Hmm? Do you really think that? That we don't mean anything? Why, it's your breadline that's most in need of a laugh. Oh, yeah, right. You just open your eyes and see. It's not about us, it's about them. There are people like Laurel and Hardy starving in the streets. Oh, fine. We'll make a two-reader about starving in the streets. I mean it. It'll be a riot. Look at Chaplin. Oh, great, Chaplin. He'll have done every starving gag there is. Just come out of your head for a minute. Everybody's Chaplin now. Our whole audience are up against it. They need us now more than ever. <laughs> oh, boy, I'd love to live in your world. But only if they see us getting gags out of the worst crises. Then maybe they'll think things ain't so bad. Really? Marital crises? Absolutely. Other women? Why not? Losing a baby? The boys adopt a baby. As a ploy to save Ollie's marriage. Because Mrs. Hardy has walked out on him. Because you're spending all your time with me. So we're left holding the baby. When she serves divorce papers on you... And we have to become surrogate parents. <laughs> <laughs> we could make that work. Tell me you're doing the right thing with Lois. Stan? The disaster. <laughs> okay, Stan, I've had just about enough of this. If you won't sign a contract, you can get off my set. I'm telling you to get off my set. I own this lot. It's you who has to go. Now go. Get out. <laughs> My God, babe, I was on self destruct. And maybe even your broad shoulders would have carried me if I'd listened, but I was going too fast. Way too fast to even learn the lessons for myself. Sorry to call so late, babe. I, I'm just desperate. I, I couldn't think what else to do. Why? Whatever's the matter? It's Eliana. She's... I've just got back to find her passed out on the bed. She's like Myrtle, you know? I couldn't think what else to do. You're the only person I can call on for help. Will you come and help me deal with it? Sure, Stan, of course. She's in court tomorrow, drink driving. I'll just get my coat. Babe, who is it? I'm 
ready to go when you are. Seems to take longer and longer to get the war paint on. Hello, Mr. Laurel. Hello, Lucille. I'm sorry if I'm... I didn't expect to see you. I didn't get a chance to tell you. I'll be... Thank you, dear. Babe, you old dog. How come to you to girl and nobody knew a thing? <clears throat> <clears throat> well, the divorce with Myrtle's not gone through yet. I'm sorry, Stan. I, I, I wanted you to be the first to know, but I guess you do now. Well, that's fine. Just fine. Just give me a minute. Uh, no, 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 absolutely not. I, I'm interrupting. But Ileana, no, no, gonna... please, just tell me what to do. Oh, and I can't come. No! No. <laughs> I'm panicking. Just tell me the form and I'll go. Get some coffee on, good and strong. Then undress her and put her in the bath. But don't leave her alone for a second, do you understand? Sure. Above all, don't let her vomit when she's on her back. She could choke to death. Right. I'm sorry, Stan. Eliana's better than nothing, but without her, it, it's just me and the dark. I'm here to help you. All I can, just call me, huh? Anytime. Anytime. The tie is never wrong. Upward and onward. But not downward, hmm? No, I'll be fine. You deserve the best, babe. You are the best. I'll see you at work on Monday. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia On the trail of the lonesome pine <laughs> I'll be fine. Are you sure? Get back in there and, and kiss that beautiful lady for me. Night, Stan. Night. She carved her name and I carved mine. No oh, June, like the mountains, I'm blue, like the pine. I, I am lonesome for you in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. My God, babe. You're still here. How are you doing that? God damn, that's a hell of a thing. You've got more memory in there than most of us know about. Oh, that's it. You hang on to my arm. You grip it tight. So I know that you're here. You know, Edith said something I didn't understand, but, but I do now. She said I was lucky to have this time with you. And she was right. Now, I never said this before. All my life I wanted to make it on my own. You know, be a lone star like Chaplin. But it never happened, and deep down inside I knew it never would, because I didn't have it, and it, it burnt me up. But then, Roach, teamed me with you, and the two of us, we had it. Oh, yes, just as funny as Chaplin, just as famous, and just as loved. You know, at home, I have old piles of fan mail, you know, up, right up to the ceiling. <laughs> for, for both of us, babe. And, and I think people write to us because they need us, you know, they need to know that we are there. And it's not just them, I mean, you know, when you go, I'll just go back to being Stan Laurel again, you know. Who means nothing. Nate, you wanted the truth. Well, in, in a few days, in a few days, I'll probably get a call from Lucille to say that babe is gone. And I won't come to the funeral because I'll either make a fool of myself or I'll say something inappropriate. And that's why I'm saying this now. I'll, I'll stay at home with Ida and I look out at the ocean. But all the time, I'll be writing new material for us in my mind, you know. 
new routines, gags, and all it'll take will be just a, a headline in the newspaper, you know, to get me thinking about us going out with brushes or going door to door or trying to, uh, trying to, <laughs> trying to avoid the wives. <laughs> but I know that I'm just passing the time. You see, when you're here, all my comic thoughts, and that's most of my thoughts, they, they have meaning. But when you're gone, you know, it'll just be the dreams of an old man who's got, who's got too much time on his hands. Oh, don't go, babe. I'm not going anywhere. Do me a favor, go get Lucille for me. That director doesn't know what the hell he's doing. It's over, you know. We've got another week of shooting. We can make it better. Let him rest. I can't. We're doing routines from 30 years ago, rewritten by people who don't know us, for men half our age. It's time to stop. We don't stop, babe. Old soldiers never die. Oh, yes, they do, Stan. I've got nothing without you. You got plenty. We both have. And Ida is the best thing that ever happened to you. Why stop when the fans want us to keep on? They won't when they see this picture. Stop living in the past, Stan. No. Besides, they need us. You said so yourself. They'll always have us, always. They've taken our best moments and put them in a can. We'll be loved wherever we go. That's enough for anybody. Maybe for you, babe, not for me. I have to keep fighting. I can't tell you how good it feels to stop. No, you can't. Are you gonna get Lucille for me? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Poor, sick, Mr. Hardy. How could I wish any more suffering on you? Your going would be a mercy. I realize now that I was so taken up with all those moments, holding them to me so they didn't slip through my fingers, that I seem to have missed the journey. But the worst thing is that we'll never make each other laugh again. We lightened up the depression, for God's sake. But not this. Not this. But you were right. We're blessed, you and me, because someone has frozen all our best moments and stuck them in a can. I watch our stuff over and over again, hours at a time. I see every little detail. Sometimes I can see how we could have improved it. <laughs> I can hear us talking through the scenes, and above all, I can watch you in your prime. Big, beautiful, so funny. That's how I'll stop. I'll stop the whole world. I did my best. I'm obviously a lousy, sick visitor. No big goodbye. There's no need. Goodbye, Mr. Hardy, my dear friend. Hmm? Oh. Uh, I'll get Lucille to get you some, some water. What is it? What? What? Babe! Your throat. What? Your, your, your throat? Is it your throat? What? I get it. I get it. You're trying to do the tie twiddle. Oh. <laughs> My God! All this time, you've been doing the tie twiddle, and every time you did it, I poured a glass of water down your throat. <laughs> I burned that onwards. Your bladder must be ready to burst. <laughs> this is a great moment. You are a funny, funny man. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is going on?
Laurel residence. Stanley Laurel speaking. <laughs> Dick, how are you? You're, you're in Santa Monica, huh? Of course, of course. We'll be six for tea, okay? Hmm. That's fine, Dick, that's fine. You come on over and bring the kids. I'll bring, I'll bring them. <laughs> we'd, we'd love to see them. <laughs> uh, I'll show you my Oscar. Ours, I mean. Okay, bye. Next week's drama uncovers the secret life of a comedy legend. From our Curse of Comedy season earlier this year, David Walliams stars in Rather You Than Me, next Tuesday at 11 o'clock here on BBC4. Next tonight, stay tuned for Only Connect. Before the first heartbeat, a fight for life begins. And within the walls of the womb, it's everyone for themselves. Mother versus baby. Right from the beginning, mother and baby are locked in a battle for survival. Nature versus nurture. If knowledge is acquired in the womb, where does it come from? Triumph over adversity. It's one of the great miracles that babies survive at all. The extraordinary story of life before birth. Growing babies, coming soon to BBC4. With an open mind, you can open doors, travel open roads and open your eyes to a wider world. With an open mind, you can go anywhere. This is the very edge. Let's do it. Let your passion lead the way. Open your mind with open university programmes on the BBC. That is the best day at work I've ever had. For more information, call 0845 366 8010 for a free magazine.